Hey Fallout fans, this is Matt with another Fallout New Vegas player guide for new players or for people who just want some, I don't know, advice about how to get through different portions of this game. So I haven't done anything since last recorded. I'm still outside of the Bison Steve and Prim. I was debating on whether or not I wanted to record it. Strategy-wise, it's largely a combat mission. Uh, but there are some decisions in here that if you didn't know, maybe you didn't know about them. Just a couple of things, nothing real major. Uh, I am not going to take uh, Eddie in with me. He'll just get in the way and might get himself killed. So I'm just going to have him wait here. And have him carry some of my excess junk. Pretty much anything that weighs anything I don't really need. Um, you know, doctor's bags, exception. Once stuff gets to be over a, over a pound each, it's like, well, this is stuff I could easily do without. Might need some water. Just to remove the temptation. I don't know, the magazine doesn't weigh anything. Uh, I'm not going to use the bat or the pistol or the binoculars. ammo all right that's good so there's bad dudes right inside So the good thing about this place is that these guys don't alert everybody in the place. There's a bunch of other dudes down there, and these are the only ones you need to worry about. Already we got some good stuff. Hard door, 75. This is one of the few ones that I don't try to unlock 
mainly because I'm rarely having the skill to do it at this point. It's a lot easier just to unlock it this way. Oh boy, here's a few. Well, one anyway. Alright, let's find a common... Okay, a ceiling. Okay, well, it doesn't end in an ING. I and both match. Eh. Locked out. Lunch boxes are good because you can make uh, basically homemade mines with them. Average safe. I don't know, what's my lock picking at right now? I think it's at 47. Yeah, it's too hard to get to 75. Otherwise, I could have gotten both locks, but that's fine. A little bit of Mentats is all I need. Yeah, this is sensitive. Should probably use the lead pipe. Hey, leveled up. All right. Um, let's see what do I want. There. No, I don't have to worry about the fifties. And I get my next perk. So I got the low level ones, which I've already looked at. Some of them I might have new qualifications for. Uh, let's see. Lady Killer and Confirmed Bachelor are great to take. I usually save them until I get to a level where I didn't, I didn't add anything new that's interesting. Um, I already have one level of that. I could get it. Get the problem with getting more and more. Uh, faster experience points gain is that you end up leveling up too fast and that's not necessarily a good thing because that means that in most games and most rpg type games when you level up too fast it usually means you're going to go up against enemies that you're not ready for because you don't have the right equipment your level is too high for the equipment that you're using it's better just to go smooth nice and easy leveling up too fast in this game isn't besides there is a cap in this game if there's no maximum level of limits then yeah leveling up fast doesn't really matter but because there is a maximum number of levels racing to it just doesn't make any sense because then you're just going to be capped at the top level of experience halfway through the game and you'd have basically no, nothing new added in in the the following you know once you've reached it there's nothing new to add uh cannibals interesting I rarely take it unless I really want to play a really twisted character. They don't let you play ghouls in this game either. So uh, Comprehension. This is the one I've been telling you about. And then there's Education. Uh, you gain two more skill points every time you advance a level. Again, this is a great skill to take, except we want Comprehension. Uh, you get double bonus from reading magazines and one additional point from using skill books. Yes, please. It's, it's almost a guarantee that that's the one I'm going to take because magazine use is so important to complete those different little skill challenges and getting them for those books it's just even even more important. I know I put several of the books in his uh, inventory. I don't think I have any left. See, now it goes up to plus 20. Plus 20. Plus 20. Plus 20. 20 but
the books don't the books don't actually say anything about what they gain give you that's why it's easy to just consume them as soon as you get them not realizing what they are so the uh, the let's see line congressional style congressional style so now my speech got increased by four points Oh, I said that those were for specials. They're not specials. They're, they're permanent increases to your skill. That was my fault. Oh, speaking of errors I made in the previous video. Um, and there. Survival went up four. Well, we were at the uh, playground that's above the... Uh, the drive-in theater outside of Prim. I said that there wasn't anything in that little that little playground area. I, I, for the life of me, I swear that there was a magazine on one of the uh, the picnic tables, and I just didn't see it in game. But when I rewatched the video afterwards, I did see it. It's on the end of the table. I, so the next time I go through there, I got to make sure I grab that magazine. It is just a magazine. It's not you know. It's not like it's an amazing treasure, but, you know, there was something to be gained there. This is a good uh, source. If you ever get to the point where you can utilize pre-war books, there's quite a few pre-war books in here that you can pick up for free. Right now, they're not that useful because they're, they're just going to be weight. So I'm going to leave them, but I know where they're at. Also a great source for bottles and ruined books. We already got a uh, star bottle cap. From that table out in the hallway some free ball free ones here and look floor safe that requires 75 lock picking pre-war money pre-war money is just like uh the cigarette containers they're lightweight or no weight and they are worth something in trade um Oh, and then the, another thing that's easy to miss, Tales of a Junk Town Junk Vendor. So now our barter in, increased four levels. Uh, skills. Whoops. Our lock pickings at 56. See? Now our lock picking skills at 56, but partially adjusted because of the Mentats. And if I use a lock picking guide, if I have one. Oh, I used it. Oh, shoot. Well, if I had one in here, it would give you plus 20, and I'd be able to open the stupid floor safe. So now I have to go find one. Still got the Mentats working for me. Repair of 35 or higher to fix it. It's not that big a deal if you want to fix it. The biggest reason to fix it is that you get the uh, um, experience points for it. Uh, let's see. Do I have anything that gives me fixing things, isn't it? Isn't that what it's called? Yeah. That should be enough. Because I don't really want to use the elevator. I just want to fix it. No, it didn't even give me any experience, did it? More Mentats. All right, there's a bunch of guys in this big hallway over here. Got the maintenance key. If you didn't have the maintenance key, you can unlock it the hard way. silenced 
weapon, which is okay, because debating whether I should just let this thing charge up. lot of racket. Now, one of the reasons why I decided to come in here is because there are multiple ways you can deal with these guys. You could use stealth and, and go through this hallway and free the deputy. You can even sneak him out. Uh, you can go in guns and blazing and just shoot it out with a bunch of guys. You could use uh, your grenades or uh, dynamite or your grenade rifle and just use explosives to blow up, blow up, blow up all the guys. Explosives work fantastic. They will do the job. They will kill the guys that are in there in spectacular fashion. The problem with explosives is that they tend to blast everything that's in the room and they'll scatter stuff. Most of the stuff in there isn't that important in this case, but in some places it's it makes a mess of rooms, it makes a mess of bodies. It's effective, but it's sloppy. The incinerator works great. It doesn't do immediate damage. I mean, it does some immediate damage, but it's the... It, the fire continues to do damage to them as they burn. Meanwhile, they're still shooting at you, so it's not quite the explosive impact, but it doesn't destroy the entire environment either. Um, guns blazing works fine. It helps if the guns are in better shape because they'll do better damage. Um, the shotgun does great damage when I'm fighting one-on-one, -on -one, but it isn't that great when I'm fighting multiple people, and I, I, I can only shoot it twice before I reload it. So I don't have ideal weapons for a shootout. Stealth is great too. If you use quiet weapons or things that give you a bonus in stealth or it really just sneaking and hitting people for bonus damage is great. Just like that. I swore there was four of them though. One, two, three. Hmm. I swore there was four red blips. Another incinerator so I can fix up the one I got. Now, there might be points in the game when you need to find a bunch of the, the cooking pots and plates and all that kind of jazz. This is a fantastic place to find that, as well as the flatware. Uh, spoons and forks and knives and so forth. There's stuff all over in here. There's actually, this is one of the very few indoor located campfires in the game. If you really wanted to make this place a base, it would be kind of interesting. I've never done it myself. 
I've thought about it, but I've never actually converted it, mainly because it's such a mess. A lot of tables that are just scattered around. Now, see, if you'd gone through the front area here, not only do you have two doors you have to deal with, so you have to worry about people coming up from behind you. Also, when you're shooting and blowing them up, their bodies will fly all over the place, and they'll end up sitting on, on tables and other stuff, so... That's why the explosives are out. Although it's effective, it does get to be pretty messy. It's not a bad place to have a little base because lots of space. Problem is, is you can't do any furniture management in this game. There's no uh, adding anything. You can lots of room to lay stuff down. You got plenty of beds, plenty of tables, lots of floor space. All right. So here's the other little trick with this. Uh, usually you're just going to come in here, you're going you're gonna to talk to uh, the deputy, you're gonna, he'll tell you what he's going to tell you, and, and that's pretty much it. And you'll let him go, and you can either have him come with you, he won't be any help to you in combat. Um, if anything, it'll probably be a detriment. It's easier just to get him to leave. Oh, they like their booze. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of uh, purified water here in the broken fridge. I'm going to go ahead and fix up a couple of things to lighten my load. Now, oh, here's the little trick. You're hidden. Sneak. Grab, his be grab the Deputy Beagle's journal. Read it. So that's how he got caught. More importantly is that's information you wouldn't get because he's not going to tell you any of that stuff. But because you stole the little book, you get the information. That has to do with your core mission of finding the guy in the uh, checked suit. If you go to your quests, trying to find the men who killed you, who tried to kill you. He listened to his journal and got information. So now he tells you that the, it advanced this and says, now you're supposed to head through Novak, through Nipton, ask around Novak about your attackers. So it advanced your story, and it's completely missable. Because talking to him is never going to get you that information. You must be Deputy B. Um, How'd you end up hostage? Now, if I can pass this challenge, fine, I can get his help, but it, it's fine. I've already missed my opportunity to do that. Um, he's going to sneak out of here, and he's going to go outside. was quite an adventure we taught breaking myself out of a hostage situation not to problem is there's still no law in prim what are we to do the next time ruffians menace us and hold us hostage so they need a new sheriff and the same goes for the the guys over here they basically are saying the same thing you can get advice about getting sheriff you can either make the robot sheriff He's not going to be very effective. Deputy Be Beagle won't take hey the job. But then he gets mad when he doesn't get, get the job. That's the stupid part of this whole thing. Spoiler alert. Is 
still don't have 75 lock picking. We got the rope. Oh, here he is. Hey, youngster. I hear gas is good as. I heard or you can have the uh, the NCR can take over. I imagine the NCR would be able to bring some law. What about Prim Slim? Where? Hey, youngster. All right, let's see if I can dump some extra junk. Another satisfied customer. All right, we haven't fixed things yet because they're still in here. We have to go clear out the rest of, of Vice and Steve. Howdy, partner. Well See, we could try to reprogram him using the batteries and conductors or by using a science skill. It's actually the more entertaining of the sheriff options, and it's one where it doesn't require you to go to the prison. So if you do screw up and free Good Springs before going to the prison, that takes the, the, the prisoner that's over there pretty much out of the oh. equation. Then your choices are either have Prim Slim be the sheriff or the NCR. And the NCR will do it, but the people of the town really don't really want them here. This isn't their space. Um, so they kind of the people kind of resent the NCR because they're kind of bullies. They're just going to do their own thing, and they're not going to really bust their ass to defend the town from Caesar's Legion either. So it's not exactly a good deal. The best bet is to pick the guy that's in the prison. Now I can go ahead and get him to do it. Once I get him over here, then everybody, everything will go back to normal. But I need to decide: is it worth going through the upstairs or recording it? Because it's just, a, it's just a bunch of guys. You kill them, you get their treasure. It really isn't. Um, so I think this is a good time to stop. This. Uh, the few tricks, tips and tricks I had for this were pretty, you know, I think they're useful, but there's stuff that most people are just going to figure out on their own. I wish I would have had the higher, uh, my higher attribute level, but it's just not quite there. If I had the magazine, but I don't have a lock picking guide. Um, so upstairs, there's a handful of powder gangers. The last one's left in town. Um, you can sweep through, kill all of them, loot the, the two floors of, of stuff that's up there. Uh, it's good stuff. There's some little, I wouldn't say story stuff, almost like uh, flavor. Almost, it's like flavor text. It's like some flavor of some of the stuff that's happened in the casino. Um, but I don't think it's all that important for me to record it because it's, it's basically just, you know, your FPS type stuff. It's clear it, you know. Uh, kill all the bad guys and loot all this all the stuff that's there so i'm going to stop there my next recording will be i'm going to cover leaving prim and going to the ncr basically it's going to be between it's the space between prim and the ncr headquarters or not headquarters but the ncr outpost and nipton that triangle of space has got a lot of interesting uh, things that you may or may not want to encounter. I'll show you some of the hot spots, some some of the uh, the little treasure places that may or may not be worth your effort or your time to uh, uncover. Um, if they if you think that something is too hot or too dangerous, you might want to avoid it. But there is some easy pickings to be found as well. Uh, you do a few missions for the NCR guys. You can talk to them about the prisoner release, about trying to get that guy out of jail. Otherwise, it's going to be some trips back to the prison to bring the sheriff, potential sheriff, out to take the job. Um, that's like the next chapter. All this stuff's supposed to happen after you free Good Springs, but I like to get all this out of the way before dealing with Good Springs. You won't even see, well, you may or may not show, I, I may, may or may not show the liberation of Good Springs. Um, we'll see. Um, but for now, I think that's, that's where I'm going to call it. Another chapter down. 
Um, I can foresee the next chapter being kind of a bigger one because we're going to cover a lot more out, outside stuff. This one was pretty much just in here. Um, after that, I don't know. There's some good stuff in Prim, or good stuff in uh, Nipton, I mean. Um, that's where things get to be. We have some options. At that point, there are really potentially three different pathways you can take to working your way towards Vegas. The way that the game wants you to go is through Nipton and around on the highway and up to the, the outposts that are on the, uh, the kind of the, the eastern side of our map. And it's the long roundabout way and it's not without danger. The other two pathways are very dangerous, but one of them has a very easy, not a cheat, but an exploit, there's a little, there's a spot where you can exploit the situation and with a little speed and a single pit, uh, a single stealth boy, you can get to, to New Vegas. Really, I could have gotten there day one. Um, all you need really is, is the, I think the first stealth boy I found was in the cave. There's almost always a stealth boy in that cave with the coyotes. Um, if there's not one there, there's, there's one somewhere. I always walk away from Good Springs with one stealth boy. And if you have one stealth boy, you can get to good uh, to New Vegas without having to do any of the story stuff. That's going to be one recording. And then there's the Northern Passage, which is a lot more dangerous. It's got a, uh, a good combat section to it. And I'm going to show some combat techniques and strategies for dealing with that. But otherwise, I think that's the next few recordings that I'm going to make. But that ends this one. Um, Hopefully people are watching. Hopefully people find this interesting. If you're a new player or even if you're an old player who is rediscovering the game, maybe I'm, I'm showing you something you didn't know or something you didn't think of. Maybe you have some uh, different alternative takes. I have definitely used multiple paths in this game, like this in, in encounters in here. I've done it a lot of different ways. Um, but this is the way that I'm choosing to do it now because these are the pathways that I have used most frequently. So... Uh, stay tuned for the next video. It'll be out shortly. Thanks for watching.